Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a detailed look at the 16 unlockable weapons that you can get using the high value target missions in Halo Infinite. And at the end of today's video, I'm going to show you the number one weapon I wish I would have unlocked when I did my legendary campaign playthrough. Now, if you saw my latest video, that was a detailed look at the FOB guide weapons. So that was all the UNSC weapons that you unlock as your valor increases in the campaign. These new weapons that we talk about today will also be recallable at the FOB locations. So anytime you're at an FOB, you can replenish or swap out to one of these new upgradable weapons. All right, now first up is the Rapid Fire Pulse Carbine. Now this one, as the name suggests, is a fast firing version of the standard Pulse Carbine, but it also deals increased damage and can shoot more shots before you have to worry about venting or overheating the weapon. So it's going to be a perfect go-to weapon to absolutely tear through enemy shields and allow you to use some kind of you know kinetic weapon or melee damage to finish your enemies off especially when you're dealing with like elite generals or any of the brute chieftain or captains all right number two on the list is the arcane sentinel beam my personal favorite and one of the strongest weapons in the game you're going to want to prioritize this one as soon as possible to help you during your campaign especially if you're playing on heroic or legendary this upgraded sentinel beam will absolutely shred enemy shields enemy armor, and even forerunner targets. Now, the only downside that I can find with this weapon is that it uses its ammo very, very fast. It has a high rate of fire. So that means you really only want to use it on the big boss targets or the brute chieftains, the captains, the big strong elites. Prioritize it for those targets first. And when you do run low on ammo, you have to find a hard light ammo refill station, which there are plenty of throughout the campaign, but you can't just simply run over a standard version of a sentinel beam to replenish the ammo and that goes for all these weapons on this list today in order to replenish the ammo in that weapon you either have to go to the fob to recall a new version of that weapon or go to a kinetic shock plasma or hard light ammo refill station to get new ammo in that weapon All right, number three on the list is the Duelist Energy Sword. And honestly, I was expecting a bit more from this one. It does a little bit more damage than a standard energy sword, and it uses less energy per swing and per swipe, which is good because it lasts longer. But if you use it on a legendary playthrough, honestly, you're, you're going to get destroyed with it because up close and personal is not really where you want to be on legendary difficulty. And you'll find as you play through the campaign, eventually you're going to get a sword that's even better than this one. The only thing that would have made this sword the go-to weapon, in my opinion, is if you could actually dual wield it. Because when I saw a dualist energy sword, I was thinking, oh my god, I'm going to have two energy swords. But sadly, that turns out to be not the case. All right, number four on the list is the Calcine or Calcine Disruptor, however you pronounce that. Now, this is a tried and true sidearm pistol that you can really use as a primary weapon. I was really hoping that this would have some kind of charge up capability just for an extra umph. It doesn't, sadly, but it does do an insane amount of damage. It shreds enemy shields. And because it's a disruptor, it has the added benefit of the electrical dispersion effect on the third shot. So that means that it's really, really good against enemy vehicles. It can disable ghosts brute choppers banshees tanks i mean you name it this is a really good weapon all around all right number five on the list is probably my least favorite the unbound plasma pistol now i personally am not a fan of what they did to the plasma pistol for halo infinite it just seems a bit more underwhelming this game and the fact that it no longer disables enemy vehicles with the charge up shot just kind of left me wanting a little bit more now, yes, the Unbound Plasma Pistol does do more damage on its single shots, and it does have a pretty neat feature where when you charge up the Unbound Plasma Pistol, it no longer fires a single large tracking burst. Instead, it fires a basically shotgun plasma burst where it shoots about six or seven small plasma shots, but they do not track the enemy. So you have to be really close to your target to hit all of your plasma shots. And when I was playing on Legendary, it wasn't even strong enough to take out an Elite Shield. So it's not like you can do the old Plasma Pistol BR combo or, you know, Plasma Pistol Mark 50 Pistol or Plasma Pistol Commando. It just felt like it was lacking something. 
And number six on the list is the Stalker Rifle Ultra. And this is a really, really good go-to weapon. And it's pretty easy to obtain as well. What makes this one different from the standard Stalker Rifle is that it no longer has any additional zoom capability, but it can shoot many, many more shots before you have to worry about venting or finding new ammo for the weapon. The only downside, honestly, is that it does do a bit reduced damage. So if you're playing on, say, Legendary, for example, it is going to take a few more shots than you would anticipate to take out enemy targets, even targets that don't have shields. It's going to take a few extra headshots in some cases to take them out. But it is a very consistent and good all-around plasma weapon to keep. The M41 Tracker Rocket Launcher. Now, this one is a power weapon, so note, in order to replenish the ammo on this weapon, you're going to have to go to FOB stations or find one of the very, very few power weapon ammo resupply stashes throughout the game. Now, what differentiates this one from the standard variant is, of course, it's going to do significantly more damage in a bigger blast radius, but it can lock on and track any target, so it's going to absolutely dominate anyone you go up against. If it weren't for the hard time replenishing the ammo on this one, I would say this is a must bring for any campaign mission. But because of that, I think it's more ideal set against taking over enemy FOB stations or enemy banished outposts because you can go to an FOB station, get one of these bad boys, even give a couple to your Marines and then go attack that compound and you're sure to demolish the enemies there. Number eight on the list is a perfect go-to weapon, the Riven Mangler. This upgraded kinetic weapon variant is going to shoot multiple bolts with each pull of the trigger. So it's really good at knocking off enemy helmets and taking out unarmored targets. Number two, it has a faster bullet velocity than the standard Mangler. So it goes further distances before it starts to arc and hit the ground. And number three, it has a higher ammo capacity. So you can really stack up on ammo on this weapon and take it long distances during your playthrough or during your campaign missions almost never running out of ammo before you find another kinetic ammo box all right number nine the rushdown hammer and this weapon reminds me so much of the duelist energy sword i was really expecting more when i got this weapon but I think honestly, again, it's just because I was on legendary and you find out that later in the campaign, you get a hammer that's even better than this one. Now it's not to take away. This is a very, very powerful weapon and it's really good for doing fun things like launching warthogs really far distances. And if you cheese the game properly, you can use the grapple and the jetpacks to really send your Spartan flying throughout the campaign. I'm sure you've seen a couple of the viral clips or videos on YouTube about people exploiting that. So for that point, it's really, really cool. It's a very powerful up close weapon, of course, and it uses less energy per smash than the standard hammer. But I would say if you're using this weapon just for memes, wait till later in the campaign, you're gonna get one that you're gonna love even more. All right, now next up on the list, number 10 is the Volatile Skewer. This one is a fantastic power weapon to go after. And in some cases, honestly, it might be better than that M41 tracker that we just saw a minute ago. This takes what's already an awesome and very powerful banished version of a Spartan laser. It has a super fast projectile, but it adds an explosive tip to the end of it. So when you hit an enemy, it explodes on impact. But if you miss the enemy, Unlike the normal skewer where you just wasted a bolt, this one will land next to your enemy and still deal explosive blast radius damage. So shoots very fast, it's hard to dodge, and it's explosive. What's not to love? Number 11, the Ravager Rebound. Now this is the upgraded Ravager variant that deals explosive and AOE area effect damage with its standard shot and with its upgraded charge shot but i will say this during the legendary playthrough it was not a go-to weapon for me the only real benefit i can see with this weapon is that because of its aoe damage and damage over time it's going to limit the capability for your enemy shields to recharge because as they take damage their shields are not allowed to recharge so it is good for that aspect but aside from that it's very inconsistent on its damage and sometimes you shoot at an enemy 
thinking it's going to explode on impact, but it kind of bounces around a couple of times and you miss dealing a lot of that initial damage. So for me, this wasn't really a great weapon to get. Number 12, the ultimate boss killing weapon, the pinpoint needler. Now, if you're familiar with Halo, you know the needler is a force to be reckoned with. It's basically a covenant version of a shotgun without dealing instant damage because these needles do have to travel to hit their target first. But if you get enough of them to hit your target, they deal a combine explosive damage, which is one of the highest damages you can get in Halo right now. Now, what's really cool about this pinpoint variant is number one, it's kinetic ammo, which makes it again, very, very easy to find replenishable ammo for this weapon. Number two, it has 30 rounds in a magazine before you have to reload it. So you're able to shoot a lot more targets without having to find ammo or reload. And number three, it only takes about 10 needles to explode as compared to the standard version, which needs 16 needles to explode with the needler. So this pinpoint variant is going to be sure to make quick work of any boss battles and any hunter battles you come across that you're having trouble dealing with. All right, now number 13 on the list, the purging shock rifle. If I had to choose a top two weapons of this whole list so far, it would for sure be the Sentinel beam and then this shock rifle. The shock rifle is the covenant or banished sniper rifle, and it deals obviously shock damage, which means it's really good against shielded and unshielded targets. Now, what makes the purging shock rifle better than the standard variant is number one, it deals more damage. Number two, it has more shots in each magazine. And number three, it actually shoots more shock bolts with each pull of the trigger. The only downside to that is if you have a fast moving target or if your target dodges a lot very successfully, they could potentially dodge some of the burst of this shot. So you might only hit one or two of the electric bolts when you really need to hit, you know, the four five and six that it shoots. But still, this is one of my favorite go-to sniper weapons in the game. Number 14 on the list is the backdraft cinder shot that you get after you beat an incredibly strong pair of hunters. Now the cinder shot is basically a forerunner grenade launcher. So it shoots a hard light grenade with each pull of the trigger, but it does have a very, very unique alternate fire mode. When you zoom in with this weapon, you can actually control the direction of your shot on the fly. So when you zoom in and shoot it, wherever you look at aiming, that shot will follow your aimer so that if your target decides to move, or if you're targeting in a vehicle, this can be really, really useful for that. Now, of course, with it being an upgraded variant, it does deal more damage and you can have more ammo. A couple of the downsides, in my opinion, is that it felt like it just didn't do quite enough damage for how little ammo it has. And number two, because it's a power weapon, it's extremely hard to find more ammo stashes for this weapon unless you go back to an FOB. So definitely not one of my go-to weapons, but still a fun weapon in the sandbox nonetheless. All right, last but certainly not least is number 15, the Scatterbound Heatwave. This is the Forerunner Shotgun variant, and this is a really, really powerful weapon. Now in the horizontal, the standard shooting pattern, it deals a good amount of damage, but it, it can be kind of hard to hit enemies unless you're really, really up close and personal. The only side benefit of shooting horizontal is that because these hard light shots go through the enemies, you will hit multiple targets and bounce off of more surfaces in a horizontal pattern. But if you're really focused on a single target, what you want to do is use the alternate fire method by ADSing or hitting your uh, right mouse click. And that's going to turn from a horizontal to a vertical shooting position. Now, this is where this weapon really gets interesting. The vertical shooting position is going to deal much more consistent damage against a single target. But these hard light shots go really, really far. So you can actually use the heat wave scatterbound as a DMR or sniper of the sorts. You can sit back really far, lob these shots, and they're going to go all the way over to your target deal an incredible amount of damage and still continue to go through that target and bounce around to hit other things, potentially exploding items or dealing damage to other enemies. So this is a really, really good weapon. And because it takes hard light ammo during the campaign missions, there usually is a pretty good bit of hard light ammo replenishes. 
All right, guys, so that wraps it up for our 15 unlockable weapons using the high value targets in Halo Infinite. And just to give a quick recap, if I had to choose my top two weapons in this list, they would for sure be the upgraded Sentinel Beam and the upgraded Shock Rifle. Those for me have been my perfect go-to weapons on a legendary campaign. And the Sentinel Beam when given to all of your Marines and one of the Razorback Warthogs is literally unstoppable. It deals instant damage the marines do not miss a shot and they never have to worry about reloading so definitely get out there and give that a try it's a hell of a blast to watch the marines take out an entire squadron of banished troops and even enemy vehicles but in the campaign it also will get you out of many many sticky situations so that's all i got for you today guys i hope you enjoyed the video if you did be sure to give it a thumbs up share it with a buddy get subscribed if you're new to the channel we'll have some more halo guides and halo content coming your way my latest two Halo guides were the FOB weapon guide and my ultimate Halo settings, giving you the best visuals and the best FPS for campaign and multiplayer. So with that, guys, I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care. Peace.